Riders ready, watch the gate. Welcome to the Dirty Knobs Podcast. I'm your host, Hollywood Mike Miranda, and my co-hosts are, as always, JV James Vicente and EC Eric Carter. Our special guest this week is our good friend and teammate, Charles Choo Choo Townsend. Listen, we've been playing a practical joke on him for weeks, man, weeks and weeks on end. We've been telling him, hey, you're next. Yeah, yeah. Can you do Tuesday? Can you do Tuesday? Can you do Wednesday? Can you? And whatever he says yes to, oh, we can do it. So we just keep pushing him out week after week. Well, the guilt finally got to us and we let him in. So enjoy, have a great time, listen. And there's a special outtake on the very end. So make sure you stay tuned after the commercials. Uh, speaking of commercial, dirtyknobs.com. This is my commercial for you to help us. Hey, they've got t-shirts, hats, stickers. Please get a hold of us. Go, go to dirtyknobs.com and support us. Buy a t-shirt, buy a hat. Hook us up so we can hook you up. Speaking of hookups, we have a subscriber to give some stuff to. Uh, Jeremy Smith. I don't know who you are. You are a subscriber on YouTube. So please email us at dirtyknobs.com. I'm sorry, email us through dirtyknobs.com. And we'd love to send you a box of stuff. Thanks, my man. And thanks for being a dirty knob. And now time for the show. I can't hear you. I don't know why. <laughs> you can't hear me? What is this for? Where does this go? I don't know, but if it was, up your, if it was up your ass, you'd know. <laughs> oh, there we go. There you go. There we go. Now That's we're digging it. Now we're digging where there's taters. Yeah, I told you. If it was up your ass, you'd know where, what it was for. <laughs> if it was up your ass with cleats on, you'd know where it was. That's right. <laughs> oh, goodness. Coach, I can't put my glove. If it was up your ass with cleats on, you'd know where it was. <laughs> what? Uh, what's up? What, what do we got? Where's JV? Where is he? He's walking the dog. Is he? I, I, that might be code for something. I don't know. It is. It's code for the train to Dusseldorf. <laughs> you got Dude. another bad. He got another bad batch. Another bad burger. Let me tell you, that is uh, that's part of the the household term now. It is. Oh yeah, that's been incorporated into into the Miranda house. It's a good it, code, huh? It is great code. I used it on the airplane already. <laughs> oh, let me get off the plane, man. I, Charles is trying to enter. <laughs> He's trying train. to jump the gate. He is. <laughs> see, I told him. See, you know. I told him. <laughs> Dude, I gonna, now we're gonna have to make him start. <laughs> That's right. Now You're, we're gonna hold him. Jump. Now we're gonna hold him in the. It, we're gonna hold him in staging for a long time. Lane eight. Just for that. You're lane yep. eight. You're lane eight, and you're getting a letter on your plate. <laughs> he's getting he's getting the big A on his plate. You're getting a letter. <laughs> you got to go back to tech inspection, dude. You got to get a sticker on your break table, Chuck. <laughs> you know, I collected all the color stickers. You did. I did. I was never going to get that letter on my plate. <laughs> How terrible. You have, you know, for me, who I don't like to put stickers on my plate. I always oh, had somebody true. else do it because I wasn't good at putting them on straight. Because I didn't want to, I wouldn't take the time to do it. I wasn't Billy Griggs. You know when I got the, you know when I got the, when they when they would put the letter on me when like sometimes we double up numbers, when they first did it they just they just peeled the whole thing off and slapped it on there and after that I wouldn't let them put it on my plate I would grab it myself and I would take the tiniest little four corners and just put the corners on so it wouldn't jack my plate up later man I, I just hate because no matter where they put it it covered up something oh dude it and weird. it looked terrible. Yeah. Look yeah. terrible. That was, hey, that was the start of too many number ones. Yeah. That was, that was the start of nag one, champion, jag one, gold champ, lag one, champion, yeah. gold cup, race for life, Super Bowl, Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl of BMX champion, good uh, group. IBMX, ABCDEFG champion. Every, everybody gets a trophy champion. <laughs> I was the back to school champion. Oh gosh! I, I put that on my resume once. I won, I won the Corona Norco YMCA nineteen cool like seventy nine or eighty back to school championships. So, and I put it on my resume. You did. Yeah, yeah. Proudly too. Yeah, 
And that's what got me on CW. Capital letters. That wasn't it. That was in caps. Oh, here we go. JV's on. Is JV coming on? Right now. Let's go. Oh, yeah. He's done walking the dog. That's Jay. That means Charles is still waiting. Charles, yep. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Hey, I think I think Charles got on before I did. Hey, JV. Hey, JV. I can't hear you, JV. Can't hear you, JV. Oh, I got the. Hey. Huh? So good. What's he got on there? Chuck is texting us. Dude, it keeps telling me the host is gonna let me in. <laughs> so, what do we text him? Uh, uh, it's not till next week. <laughs> you won't. You won't. <laughs> yeah, it's come do it right now. It's easy. Easy, not... had to pick, easy had to pick up his dog. We're doing it next week. <laughs> JV, are you on yet? Can you talk? Oh, dude, he's in a silent movie. <laughs> hey. Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> oh, JV. All right, so I'm texting him. It's not till next week. <laughs> Sent. It's going to be good. Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> All right, here we go. JV, you on yet? So good. What's he doing? Oh, you couldn't let that thing marinate, huh? No, no. You had to put just kidding. I didn't want to hang up on us. And... Is it working? <laughs> it, yeah, you're on there now. There he is. Damn it. Hey, oh. Charles, Charles just sent me the middle finger emoji. <laughs> well, he jumped the gate, JV. Oh, did he? <laughs> As soon as I logged on, you have one waiting in the waiting room. Wow. To come in. I was like, dude. Wow. We should just tell him we have technical difficulty. It's not working. That's a, well, <laughs> if you read your text, Hollywood just told him it's next week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. So, do we tell everyone uh, now or should we wait till we have him on to tell him? Oh, we got to uh, We got to We got to okay. tell We got it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think we got to tell him. It's been the it's been the greatest joke amongst all of our friends who are in on it. They just love it. <laughs> you know. Dude, I, I forward the text messages to everybody. It's great. So, <laughs> yeah. So, all perfect. right. Without further ado, let's bring in our special guest. Oh man, what what do you, is there anything you want to say about him before he comes on? Dude, I can't believe we're doing it. He I can't, can't believe, believe we're doing it. It's actually I mean, sooner than I thought. It would yeah, be. I agree. No, uh, dude. <laughs> Out of guilt. Super, yeah. Pure guilt on my part. I guess couldn't anymore. <laughs> Chuck, man. Chuck's like a brother to me, guys. I mean, I I think, uh, I mean, Hollywood, you were teammates with him when we were on Hutch, but I was teammates with him on three teams, man. So I, I traveled quite a bit with him. And, uh, dude, it just so many jokes, so much fun. Like, and guy is such kind-hearted laughter loves having fun with friends man so uh yeah man it's this is this is pretty cool to get to 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 bring my brother on uh remind me to tell the story i have to tell the story about going up to take the hall of fame picture just that's all i'm gonna say i have to remember it when we went up to take the hall of fame picture yeah okay. mm. i mean i raced against him for a while until yeah. he turned pro yeah. and and then even the the race that I, Eric, I don't know if you remember, but um, the race that I did go with CW to the to the NBL Grants, your mom actually met me at the airport. No way. Yeah. Mama C. With yeah. your lucky sticks? Did she ever yeah. have the lucky yeah, sticks she on there? Lucky. Yeah. She, oh. she met me at the, the airport. Sticks. Yeah. Hope his flight's on, <laughs> hope his flight's on time. JV, JV, <laughs> can you help me find my lucky spot? <laughs> JV, I need you to help me find my lucky spot. No, no, no. Don't touch the ashtray. No, no, no. Okay, okay JV, because you handed me that stick while he while he was on the gate and he had a good moto, you have to hand me this stick before every time. Every time. Every single moto. Oh, 
Where, 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 I hope oh, no. Look at this guaranteed guy. he's smiling and laughing. Yeah, I guarantee it for sure. <laughs> yeah. And it's gonna start with ah. exactly. He's oh. on. He's on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no. Exactly look, what he's doing, Hollywood. Oh look, look, ropes. <laughs> no, look, just look at my t-shirt. Look. Oh, oh we're twins. Oh, look you're at you guys. Still, you're still trying to look like me. Yeah. <laughs> before, I'm gonna happen, the dude. I'm the after version. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I I'm the sugar cookie. You're the you're the you're, chocolate chip, man. You're the no tan version and I'm the tan version. <laughs> it is. Charles is uh, left in the oven too long. <laughs> What's that? I'm the bratwurst before you cook it, is what it is. You know how they're white? Like you know like Frank Fuchsberger's bratwurst. They're they're all oh, white. Oh it's like he, chicken. Then he it's burns like them. No, it's hey. like chicken on the barbecue, man. Oh, you know what's oh, oh, just fall off? Oh, they stay hold on the grill? On. That's Chuck. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Hey, We're never gonna get through this, hey, Jamie. Hey, never. Speaking of Frankie's Foosh Burgers, Bratwurst, be honest now. How many? How many have we eaten at one time? I, I just I had dinner with him and his aunt and uncle about mm, three weeks ago, and he had to tell on me. He said I ate all of them, all of them, and then he said, "Well, the only reason you stopped is because we ran out of buns." And I said, and then he goes, yeah. And then Mike found out we had four more, but we didn't have buns and he ate them without the buns. Uh, I probably uh, 12 or 15 at one time. Yeah. I think, I think the last time I was there, Danny Nelson and I, I think we counted, we had, we had like 11 a piece. Oh my gosh. So let's wait. That's a heart attack waiting to happen. (laughs) (laughs) One more thing on Frank Fuchsberger, my kids, my kids know they've never met him, but they know that when you make brats, they're Fuchs burger style. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, they all know how to cook brats now because of Frank. I remember the first time we had brats there, I came back to California, I went into the grocery store and I, and I had to look for Johnsonville brats. And for the longest time, they didn't have them out here. He would send them on dry ice to me. Yeah, 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 hey, yeah. By the way, this is not the Frank Fuchs burger podcast. <laughs> That's true. That's true, yeah, yeah, yeah. We love that guy. But we do have a special guest, and uh, he has been a teammate to all of us. Uh, we may have all raced against you at some point, by the way. I was thinking about that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely true. Yeah. yeah. You, there's, one of us that you, there's one of us that you never beat. Oh, um, okay. Well, <laughs> oh, I just, just <laughs> want to say that one time. <laughs> I can't say that. You just, just, just didn't race long enough. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. I quit, I quit that business early, man. I don't want to get been a moto, man, where I've come up on Chuck, and all I see is ass and back, dude. And I can't see around him to get around him. <laughs> on, the, on those ABA indoor tracks, man, that guy could. Dude. Hey, Black <laughs> Magic took up the entire course. Get <laughs> hey, 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 EC, do you remember one time we were at Evansville, um, and, you know, that straightaway was like 100 yards long? Yeah. And back then the NBL had, what was it? 16 over open and yeah. we were on hutch yeah. and coming through the last turn, you were leading open and I was behind you and I passed you and you just, <laughs> you, you just looked over at me and said, you ass. <laughs> <laughs> so mad. <laughs> Ev- Evansville home with the Matt, Matt, yeah. Matt. You yeah. can hear it from a mile away. That's yeah. right. That's, that's, Charles, that's where you Yeah. The super slow, oh. the, Vol- the Volkswagen horns, man, yeah. man, man, <laughs> man. Cool. Charles, that's where you put the. That's where you put that branch to the windshield, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> See no. the first guy get. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Who was driving? Were you were driving? <laughs> no, no. Oh, you were driving that thing. I, I, I say you were seat. driving. I think it was our fearless leader. Yeah, I was front seat. No, you were driving Hollywood. I was front seat and Rocket was in the front seat with me. And that thing came, whoosh, man. Right, yeah. right through it? Right through oh, the windshield. Dude. Pulling into the track for the very first time at the very <laughs> first race with our very first day of our rented motorhome. Brand new for, rented motorhome. Brand new and was supposed to last all summer long. First track, 
coming down the driveway, a big giant branch, like this, like the width of your arm went through the windshield and I kept going. It just kept creeping in. <laughs> I just kept I getting closer and closer. <laughs> It, it was like a scene from from Stranger Things or something like that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Hey, and and what was Hutch thinking about all of us going out on tour for seven weeks in a brand new rented motorhome? He had our he had our fearless leader. We had oh. our fearless leader to keep us in check. He was oh. the responsible one. What was he like? Nineteen. He was. We were, so you were, what so, were you? Twenty three, Hollywood. Yeah, he was in charge. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> He was in charge. He was a 19 year old. And all of us, I mean, Miranda, you're the biggest kid of us all. And we we're all supposed to behave on tour for seven weeks in a motorhome. <laughs> Dude, I, if I'm being honest, guys, I don't even remember him being on tour with us. Did he go home early or something? Who, Mike? No, Richie. No, no, he was there the whole time. I do. I literally <laughs> don't remember him being on That's because the only time we needed to see him was when we needed money for food <laughs> <laughs> or bail. In your bail. Exactly. Hey, hey, do you, do you remember prior to getting to Evansville, um, that narrow road going to the track, and uh, the that older gentleman was riding the ten speed, <laughs> riding his ten speed. Dude, I remember that. It's on my list. I I swear I have a I have a Polaroid. Do you remember we took a Polaroid of him riding we, that? Yeah, I we, have a picture of him. I have a picture. I have a picture of the old guy on the road bike, which we almost ran off the road, honking the horn at him. I have the picture of the little girl on the little girl's bike with the bent forks. Well, I mean, the forks weren't bent until Charles got out and rode her bike. <laughs> but I took, and then we passed. You know, we gave her some money. We let her go, and then we uh, let took her go. A picture of her. I took a picture of her riding with her bent her forks all choppered out. So Chicago bad. style, shy style. Hey, oh. hey James, so we were we were in the motorhome with Hutch, you know, the motorhome that Hutch had rented for us, and we we're driving to the Evansville track, and the road was super narrow to get to the track, and there was this guy, older guy, riding his ten speed, oh, and Mike was honking the horn. We we're all yelling up, so I'm hanging out of the window in the motorhome, and I we're driving by, and I snatched the guy's hat. Oh my God. And Mike looks back, and Eric, they're sitting up in front of the motorhome, and they look back like, dude, what are you doing? And we looked back at the guy, and he was just like, <laughs> trying to catch up to us. It, it was a combination of Lance Armstrong and Pee Wee Herman. And the catch -up <laughs> Did you give him the hat or no? Did you give it back? I don't, I don't remember what happened after that. I, I, think, I think we hung it up. I think we hung it on the mirror as a trophy. Yeah, and then stayed with us on tour for a little yeah. while. <laughs> the guy's hat. <laughs> oh god that was some i remember the same motor home that i think ecu and Bacchus had like the booger collection on the mirror yeah there was a couple or guys. zit oh and zit you guys are <laughs> yeah it was there was that was that wasn't just us that was the that was a that was a team competition yeah Every, cool. i remember after you know i always i drove a lot so i and i ne i just didn't want to use that restroom but i remember <laughs> the first time i went in there i was like What's happened to this mirror in here? Looks like if someone yeah, that, that, someone that, plastered the walls. You got some that new plaster. Mom was just like done. I think by the time we did all the damage to that, I think Hutch could have just bought a new one and kept oh, it. It would have been cheaper. Would Definitely would have been cheaper. Would have been. Cheaper. It's, a it's a shame he went bankrupt. <laughs> well, he went bankrupt because all the damage, all his riders were wow. doing this stuff. I don't know. I don't know what happened. How that? What happened with that company? The finances. On we didn't help that at all. <laughs> He got the, that motor that that motorhome tour was something else, man. Oh, I, you know what? I think how old was Rocket? Rocket Rich seven. Houseman was seven years seven. old. I think uh, he was, was he seven? seven? Yeah, I thought he was hanging eight. with you guys. He was set, I think seven, eight. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! I think I think he was shaving by the time we got off of that tour. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, you know I. Hats off to his parents, to your in-laws, Eric, because I would not have let my kid go on tour with us. Oh, dude, it was crazy, man. <laughs> by, the time, by the time Rocket got off tour, he had a vocabulary of a sailor. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he, was, he, could, he could talk hand-in-hand hand with cheese. <laughs> Even cheese would tell him old war stories. Yeah. Dude, it was Do you guys remember Mike Luna? Remember oh, he sure. Dude, mouth? that guy had a mouth on him, too. I remember him. <laughs> Do you remember he had that man smell B.O.? He was like, nah, what the funk? <laughs> oh, hey, that kid was fast as shit, though, man. He was in the motorhome, it was so thrashed 
that do you remember mike we where did we stop like in indiana or Hold somewhere on. don't don't steal my thunder i okay. have this is my this is my, my favorite charles story of all the things i could say about charles this is the biggest influence you've had on me and it's been an influence on me as a parent it's something i instilled in my kids we we that just it was just been too long and the motorhome was terrible and it was just zits and crap like and ass oh, <laughs> like pile of clothes pile of clothes just Everywhere. in the back yeah oh it's terrible and charles we pulled over for something and charles goes that's it no more and he goes you guys got two minutes to get your stuff and get it together and get your bags and he was losing it that's it <laughs> wow luna Z now, Ollie, I don't care. It's rocking. I don't care how old you are. Get your stuff. Get your cheating <laughs> kit. Whatever. Just get it and get it out. And anything that's left, I'm gonna take care of. And he and he's like, 90 seconds. <laughs> and the he countdown. Threw all the shit out, right, dude. Whatever was left, he, he took it everything and just threw it yeah. out of the motorhome, yeah. out into the into the grass, into the wet grass. Whatever, <laughs> threw it all out. And he said, "Okay, we're leaving." And we're like, "Oh, come on." Dude. Well, dude, now I, I my kids. See- my kids growing up, Charles, I would say, okay, you got two minutes to clean your room. Anything that's not picked it up, I'm throwing away. <laughs> oh, that's it. 90 seconds. <laughs> it's funny because my daughter will come up to me. My kids will come to me and says, hey, what happened to such and such, such and such? You throw it away. And I said, hey, it was sitting on the counter, you know? <laughs> on the same, I'm on the Charles. Charles Townsend, Chuck E. Choo Choo, throw your shit away oh, program, man. <laughs> man, and it was it was so funny because I'd never seen people pick up their shit so fast. I just took everything. I mean, we were, what, halfway into a seven weeks, yeah. eight weeks we were on the road? That was the first, but you, because you never really, like, you were always, like, having a good time and joking and carrying on, and... Oh, dude, it was just I like lost my shit. Dude. <laughs> yeah, he always had a good time, but all of his stuff was always in his bag. Yeah, right. that was the thing. And then uh, about halfway into tour, when the motorhome starts smelling like feet and ass and Mike Luna's body odor, I just, <laughs> I just lost my shit, and I just threw everything out. I, man, EC, I never, I had never seen you guys pick up your shit so fast. Well, dude, I was scared. I wasn't gonna lose my shit. <laughs> Well, my shit was out there because all my shit was on yeah. the floor. I think most of it was his, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, oh, course, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think either mine or Zaynow's. Oh, yeah. And I'm <laughs> and most and most people that know me, I'm a. I mean, I've gotten a little bit better since I've had kids, but I'm I'm kind of a little bit of a orderly, not a neat freak, but just like like things in order. But that oh, motorhome home was thrashed. Yeah. Well, your room with Chuck. You get in the room, shit gets. Bags on zip, she can set up nice and perfect. Everything's styled, dude. I, and this joker had to room with me, man. <laughs> You're fucking pig pen. Dude, I just have my corner and all my yeah, shit. Dude. All your shit my corner. corner over there. <laughs> my hat's off to your wife for putting up with you, dude. Dude, you will be surprised though, man. I actually got a lot better, Chuck. I'm stop. Yes, I mean. stop. Hey, stop. No, no, stop. I'm telling sell, you. Sell it somewhere else because yes, I'm trying to sell it. Yeah, dude. Right. Come on, dude. <laughs> no, I have gotten a lot better. Because I had a you, you dude, saw the back of this truck, didn't you, JV? You saw the back of this truck. Yeah, but Frog, Frog, but yeah. Frog Town, not so bad. I roomed with him over there. It wasn't so yeah. bad. He yeah. did live out of the big bag and just kept that's all he did. He's learned to get yeah. a bigger bag. It's a bigger yeah. truck <laughs> to throw into the corner. <laughs> Bigger bag, which means a first, you know, bigger corner in the bag to shove shit into. That's all it is. <laughs> right. But it's in my bag. But it is in the bag now. It's so in his bag. bag. It's not hey. on the RV floor anymore. My shit wasn't laying around in our room, was it, JB? <laughs> no, no, actually, it wasn't. <laughs> I will tell you, Chuck. When I st- when I started raising mountain bikes, I got a coach, and this coach, like, dude, he whipped me into shape because I was, I showed up to a road ride one time, and I, dude, I showed, I didn't have my shoes. I didn't have anything. I didn't have a bottle. And I showed up right when the ride started. You mean your mom didn't fed extra shit to you? <laughs> <laughs> so my coach. He, Eric! <laughs> Eric! <laughs> so he made me, he made me do the whole group ride with no water bottle. And half the ride, he threw it up next to me. And he's like, and I'm just sweating my ass off, dude. I'm tired. I'm thirsty. He goes, are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? I'm like, yeah. Give me, I need to drink. He goes, No. <laughs> yeah just made me finish the whole ride with no bottle that's what you get it. so like when i started racing mountain bikes chuck you'll be surprised i actually got my kits 
per day set out. So it was like Thursday, really? Friday, Saturday, Sunday kits, underwear, socks, everything laid out. That's no what that. shit. Yeah. That's what marriage will do for no, you. That's what no marriage shit. will yeah. do for you. Hey, 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 so did your wife write it on the palm of your hand? She did. <laughs> like you're fucking cheating in school on a test. <laughs> yeah. You know those, you know those granimal things? She she bought granimals and could she she put the two zebras yeah. and the drafts and all that shit together. Tiger underwear, tiger socks, tiger right. jerseys. Matchy matchy. Matchy day matchy. One, day one. Day two. Today's, yes, today's yeah, draft yeah, day. Yeah, today's yeah, draft yeah. day. Exactly. Oh shit. Oh man. Hey, I wanna I wanna say one more thing about Chuck, and that is that uh dude, another awesome lesson I learned. Uh, and I think I owe it all to Chuck. Speaking of moms, dude, you always called your mom every day after the races and yeah. you called your mom to just to tell her how it was or how you were. And I just always thought, oh, man, I respected that so much. And I also loved yelling into the phone when you were on the phone. Mama's <laughs> on! <laughs> and I, yeah. I, and once in a while, you'd let me talk to her. And I swear, dude, I didn't get a word. Yeah. You know yeah. yeah. But I love talking to her. Yeah, she. Oh, Mama son, Charles is good. He did really good. He, Mama son, he was fast today, fast today. And then she'd say something. I'd go, Yeah, yep, yeah. He's great. <laughs> Charles is great. Good. He's a good boy. He's a uh, good boy. Uh, oh yeah, my my mom was something else. She was she was a character. You know, at, at the time I was like, Oh my God, you just you just oh. But then you know, now that we get older and a little bit wiser and we're a little more worldly, you know, I yeah, I, I get it now. You set a great example, and, and uh, it made me start to, you know, I would just call my dad, my mom and dad at the end of the weekend, but you called them every, you called her every night. Yeah. And now, uh, you know, and, and I'm not great about calling home all the time, and I still travel, and I should, I could be better you're, at it. You're, but you're, you're a not great reminder. calling people back, period, Mike, let alone uh, calling home. Well, yeah. you know what? <laughs> not, not, not everybody, just some people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's my choice, my friend. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> All right, do we do we tell him who's JV? Yeah. No, no, no. You started it, so you have to tell. Him. I didn't start it. I started. Oh, you Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think? He, who do you think? Chuck knows us three. Yeah. Who do you think he thinks. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right. So, so uh -oh. Chuck. Okay. Chuck, we could have had you on and should have had you on a lot sooner. Oh, we, shit. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> every time you'd say, oh, you know, hey, we'd yeah. say, hey, yeah. can you come on Tuesday? Yeah. And then you'd say yes. Yeah. And it was all planned. One of us would say, oh, I can't make Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. And then when every time I'd see you, I'd say, hey, man, we're trying to get you on. What's wrong with your schedule? It was us. <laughs> and dude, I know, dude, it, is. I know dude, it is, dude. Mike <laughs> Miller, Justin Shepard, we were all in on it. And every time we'd say, oh, no. No, no. And then as soon as I'd say yes, I would text everybody else. Hey, somebody come up with no. Somebody come up with a no. <laughs> you guys are a bunch of jamokes. Bunch so, of jamokes. But the last time, man, I just couldn't do it. I didn't have the heart to, to put it off. I wanted to talk to you because that really what it was. I wanted to tell you that we were doing this to you. <laughs> yeah. No, man. Yeah. All right. All right. All it's all fun and games until somebody's <laughs> zipper gets, the peepee gets stuck in their zipper. <laughs> That's right. I remember that. Ooh. Ooh. It works. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, EC, yeah. you, you uh, JV, did you, when, at what point did you guys race each other? Um, I think when we were like 17 or, I mean, it was, it was still young. I think um, Charles was on Hutch, then Revcore. And then I think that was when we, we raced each other. And then you turned pro like right after that. Right. I think we, we raced quite a few times pretty much when it was the NBL stuff and I was on yeah. Hutch. Yeah. 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 And that yeah, was it. I, um, yeah. It was like, I'd always roll up into stage. I'm like, who's this fucktard with these Galindo bars? <laughs> 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 when he got to the gate you can hear him go you come out of the gate you look like you're rowing oars <laughs> <laughs> and he and he lubed them between motos too he lubed them between motos he still squeaked i had i had my wd-40 over there putting them in the like, seat post clamps yeah 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 i was like hey dude <laughs> your bar you need oh, just stop. a seat post clamp <laughs> Oh, and, and EC, you guys, you guys raced each other when? 
I, uh, I raced, I got to race Chuck in a couple of opens, like uh, <clears throat> MBL was 16 over open. So I got to race him sometimes like that, but uh, like, he, you know, at that time he was, I, dude, I was just 16. I was like, just, I didn't have any power, man. So like Chuck was talking about Evansville, man, like, you know, I may somehow get in front of him, but you know, as soon as we got to any spot where he could open up horsepower, he just blow past me. So I started racing him 16 when we were doing that, maybe a trophy dash here and there, but I didn't really get to race Chuck until I turned pro because, you know, he was, uh, I, the way the ages worked and the way he, he went pro, he was a pro on CW when I was the, the older amateur. So I, I never really, you know, we I just a little bit until I actually turned pro in 89, I think is when I turned pro is when I started to be able to race Chuck. I, you know, and I think we would have raced each other because you took a break there for a little bit. I did. I, yeah, yeah, I thought it was going to be a super cross star for two years. <laughs> All right, you can, drink, you can drink big. You can drink yeah, big. exactly. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, I was I was that side of the super cross. I was the beer drinking <laughs> side. Yeah. Well, that, uh, yeah. That, Mike, that, were you were you racing when when Charles turned pro or no? No, I had I had quit by then. I, yeah. Or just just before I I saw how big he was and how strong he was, <laughs> and I thought, mm, but you came mm, back, you mm, came back and raced. Yeah, you back, did. You came back like, for a race or two, Mike. Yeah, yeah I was I, just gonna I, say for like two races. Yeah, two yeah. races. Elsinore because it was my low, you know, local track. Right. And, uh, well, when you raced, when you broke your back in Orlando. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You 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 were like I mean that That's was right. what eighty eighty nine. 89 yeah I think so. hey didn't what mike didn't you try to speed jump the first jump that was like the size of the motorhome or something like that i thought it was charles townsend but i, I wasn't <laughs> he did oh, i was did. close yeah i was closer to eric group <laughs> than charles <laughs> townsend so I, I didn't i didn't quite have the arm and legs for it dude all i saw was the all was his ass in the bottom of his vans oh my goodness <laughs> it was a classic lawn dart is what oh, that was oh my goodness hey chuck i was gonna say uh I heard a great story today. He, I'm, I'm sitting in inside the Supercross BMX factory right now, uh, visiting my friend Bill Ryan, and he he brought up a story. He wanted me to make sure he said the first time he saw you race was at Ascot at the when they raced inside at I mean at, at the big arena, not the small track. Uh -huh. And he said I saw Charles the gate drop, and I swear Charles had square wheels. And I was like, what? Yeah, square wheels. He goes, yeah, because when he would pedal, he had so much power he would go. Woof, woof. <laughs> ooh, ooh, like he had square wheels and i was like dude if there's one thing you could say about charles was, man that guy was raw power just absolute raw power dude and yeah same i remember the first time I, I, first time i saw you chuck was when you were on boss yeah and that was uh black magic days black magic yeah, yeah. and that yeah. and that's when don was freaking out trying to you know he pulled you over to to the free agent team but yeah. holy moly dude like Honestly, I, I, I feel like you were as a, like an older amateur and into your first year as a pro, your acceleration was dude, you were pro level at that yeah. level. I think, I think your acceleration was actually faster. Like you're then more so than your later years of your, of your, of your career. Yeah. Even and that, that was, that was all those days of getting on my bike and running and running, you know, sprinting for my mom before she could catch me for leaving the house. <laughs> the, the word that I thought best described the way you rode was brute force. You just yeah, brute beautiful. force those crakes, man. It was, and, and the same thing when you'd come inside of an, on a turn, it would be brute force. <laughs> <laughs> when you were an yeah. amateur on boss, it hold, was brute hold force. Hold that thing man. up there, Chuck. Hold that yeah. thing up there. That's the one yeah, yeah, yeah. raspberries. Oh, no, those aren't raspberries. Those are teeth marks. Those are teeth. And when you shove that in their mouth. You yeah. know, hey, you, you know, it's funny. EC is, you know, a couple, uh, a couple podcasts ago, you were talking about Don Krupe and God, he's such a good dude. And mm -hmm. I remember, <clears throat> you know, quick story. I remember I was riding for boss and I was going to race and I didn't have, um anywhere to really stay and I think it was a race in Springfield Illinois or something like that so I actually had reached out to your mom Eric and she said yeah you know um just get there and I think Don has kind of got some 
spare room for you know you can you know bunk with ryan or something because you know back then ryan was only three feet tall he was just a little kid so your mom says like yeah i got it all worked out you can uh, stay with dom blah, blah blah so that weekend i raced for boss but i kind of um you know i shacked up with you know the free agent team yeah. and then that was the weekend that don kind of hey you know uh you know and then like that oh. later net that later that next week i got a phone call from don and just made the transition into into free agent so yeah yeah, that was crazy. That was a, and that was pretty crazy too because that's when Boston free agent were like, yeah, that yeah, year. And then, yeah, and then Carlo had called and and was threatening Yvonne, and Yvonne was like, told Don, well, you know, I, I don't know, I don't want that, you know, all that heat and all that trouble, and you know, Don, ah, oh, fuck him. <laughs> <What's laughs> like, I'll make a call. I got yeah. some friends in New York. I'll make yeah. a call. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you just tell him to come see me. <laughs> And I could hear Don just saying, don't worry about it, Yvonne. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> oh, so good. Yeah, that was a good year, man. We like that. Well, I mean, basically what happened, I mean, we killed it on free agent that year. And yeah. then and then basically Mike stole the team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guilty. I mean, yeah. I, 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 Charles, I, you know, I, wanted, I wanted you, I wanted you to be on Hutch not just because you were brute force power, all that, but you were a great guy and you were great with the kids. You were great I, with the kids. I mean, I, it was- I, I, I'd like to think I had my moments, but you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's funny, Mike, because I really hadn't heard anything about the whole Hutch thing kind of coming about or anything like that. And I actually had, so after the grands that year, when I just totally froze up and choked and didn't get number one amateur, um, I actually had a discussion with Yvonne about turning pro. And, be, and I didn't hear any rumblings about anything about, you know, the whole Hutch thing. And then I remember, um, and I don't, Eric, I don't think you had an idea either because, you know, we were pretty close and, you know, we, I'm sure we would have said something, but I remember Mike calling. I remember you calling Mike and it was like, Hey, uh, this Mike, I'm like, Oh, Hey, you know, and I was trying to be all cool, but I was jumping off the ceiling. And I remember the exact words were, well, Hey, bud, you, you ready for your offer? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and then from there forward, I mean, it was all good. Um, yeah, we just we just hooked up and did the Hutch thing. Well, I think, Mike, I think you called my parents and and Chuck probably same day or if same not same day, same yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. And that was an that was an all star team, but not just all star racers, all star pit kids, all star families. I mean, it was it was a part of a package, right? A part of an idea of something bigger and better than just BMX racing. It was, I, I can't, I, honestly, I can't imagine if, if we were, if we had have been able to have kept that team together for a few more years oh. um, and Hutch hadn't gone out of business, how dominant that team would have been. Cause dude, we were, I mean, we, we killed it that summer. I mean, we were just stacking wins. It was crazy, dude. And like, it was contagious. Like even though the motorhome was toxic and all that kind of crazy shit, dude, <laughs> we fed off of each other and we motivated each other and we were like pumping each other up. I can remember that going to the gate and going, dude, I can't let my guys down. I gotta, I gotta go kick these dudes asses right now. Cause those guys, I'm going to get in the motorhome and I want them to be stoked. And, and I think that's how that fed. And that motorhome was, dude, there was, we won a lot of races, dude. We did. We did. It was so back then, you know, as you remember NBL, you know, race three motos and then you had, if you won your three motos and then the main, they, they considered that a perfect. That's right, right. Right. And then, and then if you, what did they take James? Cause you raced a lot of NBA. I can't remember. What was it? If you're five perfects and then the grand scores. Five perfects in the grand. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think that year when we were in Hutch, I had 13 perfects and I thought Eric, cause you and I kind of tallied it up. I thought you had like 14 or 15 or something mm. like that. Yeah. We were stacking them, dude. Yeah. Like, it was crazy, man. And, and I mean, we were way into the summer and we had already maxed out our perfects and we were just canceling crazy. people out. Yeah. We were, doing. we were just keeping people from getting those points, man. Yeah. How many Rock, rocket Luna, all those, yeah. we were all doing it. Yeah. We were How all many people it. did you poach? Like it would be easier to, to name all the people I didn't. <laughs> Dude, you got, you got Luna, Zaino, Zaino. myself, Chuck, Right? Rock, no, Rocket was already on. Rocket was already on. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was it. That was it. And was there any, like, did you get a phone call or anything, Mike, after that? Like, what are you doing? Yvonne Shoup was not very happy with me. Yeah. But one, and I remember seeing her somewhere. 
and we talked about it. I just said, listen, you know, I've got this, oh, I've got this opportunity to, to help some kids and get them to more races and do more for them. It has nothing to, I, I said to Yvonne, hey, listen, it has nothing to do with winning or team trophy or anything. We just have this opportunity to give these kids more. And so I picked the kids, I picked the families I wanted to pick. And she goes, well, you really picked, you really picked, you, know, <laughs> you picked all the Jerry's. And I go, yeah, yeah, I did. But dude, we got, I, that was a really like for, um, <clears throat> for our family, that was a really hard decision. Right. And I'm sure it was for you too, Chuck, because Donna and Yvonne were like family. Dude, my mom went to free agent and answered the phone and stickered frames at Yvonne's house and shipped bikes out of free agent when they started. Like that's how close we were. Yeah, I can remember there were tears on that decision, man. But ultimately, quite honestly, Hutch paid us. Hmm. You know, yeah. we got paid. Yeah. Well, 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 we're supposed to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> to I, the end. Yeah. I think I, I think I have like nine thousand or eleven thousand dollars still coming from Hutch. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, in the same and, you boat. Know, and you know what, Mikey hit the nail on the head because it got to a point to where I mean, Yvonne did what she could for us, but back then free agents the name was bigger than it really was correct you know? so right and and she couldn't get us to a lot of the back east races and stuff like that and you know eric and i you both of us we didn't start hitting the nbl circuit on the east coast until we got on hunch mm. Dude, i only the year before when i was on free agent i only went to i went to five races I, or i'm sorry i had i had six races i went to three weekends six races total so that i had five scores right 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 um and they were you know i think i did one i think i did like a vegas one of these like you know these bootleg nbl yeah. tracks that were yeah. in, in like, like <laughs> singer or something like that yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally fish out of water <laughs> like, dude you're in the wrong part of the country man you're <laughs> outside god bless linda dorsey dude because she oh my goodness that flag Dude, oh, she, she flew shit. it out here to like nobody, yeah. man. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it it uh, you know, Yvonne just she just didn't have the money to, to yeah. put it like are we when when Don put that team together, they couldn't have anticipated the success that we so we as a team and with them supporting us at the ABA stuff, we thrust that brand to where it was, right. and then it was like, well, we 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 don't have the bike sales for that yet. I mean, they weren't selling them as fast as they could make them. But they couldn't right. support us. And then, yeah. I mean, Don was amazing, dude. He put together, we left. He just put together yeah. another kick-ass team, yeah. dude. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had, he had a knack, you know, like <clears throat> people, people in Northern California will talk about Carlo having the knack to, to you know, he did with me, um, Donovan McCurdy, you know, yeah. finding good NorCal riders that were, that he was able to cultivate a little bit, yeah. you know, and, and, get him to that, and, you know, Don did the same thing. You know, uh -huh. he, and it was, it was hard leaving free agent, but you know, going to Hutch was the next, the next move. It was, you know, yeah, and how was that? Team. Yeah, it was a premier team. It was a, it was like right. a Hutch, a GT, a Diamondback, right. one of those type of teams. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I get that. But, and how was that conversation, Charles, when you left free agent? Man, you know, it was hard. Um, I just, I had called him on and she had already known. She, you know, she knew she was, yeah. she was pretty, she was pretty torqued. Uh -huh. And um, she said, well, you know, Don was, Don was going to let you go pro next year. I said, I know, I know. But, you know, I think for this moment, I think this is the decision for me, um, which, you know, looking back at it, and I've thought about this before, I'm glad that I took the opportunity, you know, I was so thankful for Yvonne for what she's done and Don and all that stuff. Mm. But it really did benefit me staying an amateur another year and just getting more experience under my belt. Yeah. Um, I was able to travel more back East and race, you know, in the South and, you know, a bunch of NBL stuff. And then that year on Hutch, um, you know, I picked up an NBL number one title and then Eric and I both won the world championships over in England that year. Yeah. So it definitely, JV, it definitely yeah. benefited me to stay amateur another year just to get, you know, that same it, ben it benefited me that like that we went together as well because you know we traveled together we raced together we fed off each other and dude we we pretty much won the same stuff that year i mean we yeah. we, we killed it that's yeah. pretty awesome so I, I i i can remember going to that to the world championships in england that was like my first overseas trip 
Same. And uh, yeah, and I, uh, it was funny because I think Eric, your parents had set up the the hotel and I just kind of fell into that. And then Jason Donnell had come with your parents also. But I remember that your mom was looking for us and she asked, she was telling me that she asked the uh, hotel receptionist person. And that's when we were wearing, that's when Hutch was doing their, their totally rad clothing, you know, the knee length shorts that were, that weren't in back then, but are in now. And then uh, your mom had asked the receptionist and they said, oh, the two boys that have the funny looking clothes on. <laughs> So I, 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 I can remember going to that to the World Championships in England. That was like my first overseas trip. Same. And uh, yeah, and I didn't, uh, it was funny because I think, Eric, your parents had set up the, the hotel and I just kind of fell into that. And then Jason Donnell had come with your parents also. But I remember that your mom was looking for us and she asked, she was telling me that she asked the uh, hotel receptionist person. And that's when we were wearing, that's when Hutch was doing their, their totally rad clothing, you know, the knee length shorts that were, that weren't in back then, but are in now. And then uh, your mom had asked the receptionist and they said, oh, the two boys that have the funny looking clothes on. <laughs> Dude, I remember that. I remember that hotel. I actually yeah. remember that hotel it was right across the free. Like, you remember, you could sit on the start gate at Slough there and I've, I've talked with other guys about that place. That I guess it was a really shady area. Oh yeah, I didn't know that. But, no, we didn't know it then. But but yeah. I remember you could sit on the you could sit on the start gate, and there was the 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 expressway was the, yeah. the freeway was right next to it. So sometimes yeah. there was a lot of cars. It was hard to hear the starter. But our hotel was right on the other side of the uh, of the expressway there. Hey, hey, so do you remember? So that was like our that was our big kind of first overseas trip, international flavor, and all that stuff. Do you remember? Do you remember us all going to dinner and and I said, "Oh, you you guys got to try this Indian food." Oh, yeah. dude, that was my first time. Yeah, I and we guys, oh, you got it. All the pink cans and lips. <laughs> you got the next day, we showed up at the track oh, from dude. eating this this red Stain. chicken. <laughs> all of our fingers and our mouths were all stained with the red, man. It was like the Hutch clown team. <laughs> And then, so I, and then Jay, little, little Jason Donnell was there. So at the time, he was probably like eight or nine. And yeah. he, I remember him looking at the chicken, not knowing what to make of it. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Hey, 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 hey and it was funny, Mike, that, uh, you know, back then, you know, um, who was the big European team? Ahmed with Boss. Yeah. Uh, Boss the Bever was riding for the team. Garrett Deuce was team managing. And I remember we were kind of pitting kind of next to them a little bit. And it was the U.S. team and then the Dutch team or whatever. And they had like their coaches and they, I think they had like a massage table for rub down and all wow. that stuff. And then I remember, Eric, I was standing next to your dad and I was just thirsty and I'm chugging down this big old Coke. Yeah. <laughs> and this tall thing of Coca-Cola and these guys over here are just drinking water and eating all their grapes and fruits and all that stuff. <laughs> yep. we're, we're warming we're, up and, and we're over there with... We got right on your face and right on your fingers. And we, we're, we, were, we're we were like, fucking, sodas. We were like yeah. the fucking bad news bears, the mischievous well, kids. Yeah. And then absolutely, then you guys absolutely smoked them. Boston, yeah. Boston Beaver at that time was, you know, him and uh, I think Wilco were the two super fast yeah. guys, but I think Wilco was super class and yeah. you were racing like 17X, I think, or 17 over. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Boss would sit in his pits and just like, he would just stare at you like you were an alien because you know he had he was just running through the everything over there and then all of a sudden this guy that he really hadn't heard of didn't know we yeah. don't you know like we'd only been on hutch for a couple what six months yeah if yeah. that and all of a sudden this dude is just torching him every lap like just he can't like you know and, and the, the your horsepower on the back straight there like i mean dude there was i can't think of a course that we raced that had more flat out sprinting pedaling all the way down that first straightaway, all the way around that first turn up that hill yeah. and then down in and you yeah. finally got a break in that corner and dude you were just, <laughs> just stretching it out and those guys couldn't keep up dude well and part of it was you know you get over there and you don't like when you race here in the states you kind of know how fast you got to go who's fast right yeah well, as you know in europe 
You don't know who's fast. You Dude. got you got some guy coming out of Chernobyl with a football helmet boning the fuck out. Yeah. Dude, that's <laughs> shit. And, and, and you and you go to the moto sheets and you can't even pronounce any yeah, of the names. You can't pronounce their names. <laughs> so my mindset was like, fuck, I just gotta go out and just win every moto like it's a main. It was really hard, man. It was, I agree with you. It was that was a hard thing about world championships. Was you didn't, you know, like when we race here you could get in the gate and you knew yeah. it was like, okay, yeah. so-and-so's inside of me. I know what kind yeah. of gate he gets. I know what he's going to do. I like, and you can strategize, dude, you, yeah. there was no, you just didn't know, man. I mean, you could right. watch the photos, but like, you can't get enough Intel. Right. No, you can get up on the gate with Joe Chernyenko, you know, with a yeah. hockey stick and just like, he's boning <laughs> out. So he's gone. <laughs> yeah. You said they had football helmets on. <laughs> Well, that too, but man, these guys, when you got to Europe and raced, you just had to go as fast as you can each race, each moto, because you had no clue, had no clue who was what. No, yeah. Belching up, belching up warm Coca Cola on the oh, back street. Yeah, That's yeah, right. and run, run into and run into the hot dog trailer with hot for a hot dog with mayonnaise. You know the, the white the white hot dog. So oh I never saw a white hot dog before. White hot dogs with mayonnaise, like. Ooh. It's so bad. Oh my gosh. So after Hutch kind of disbanded, was that when you went to Robinson? Was that no. the next team? So you know what happened is after Hutch disbanded, there was a stint there with Cycle Crack, Betty and Joe Martino. Oh crap, that's right. Yeah, I, totally forgot I do that. remember yeah, that. There was there was a short <laughs> stint there. I know I feel like I was a, a hooker just running the streets. <laughs> But there was a short stint there with Cyclecraft, and they were great people. Um, got me to a couple races. Um, love them to death. Um, the Martinos were great people. And um, the CW thing kind of came about. And I remember I was at Billy Griggs's house. And because I was staying with Billy, I hung out with Billy quite a bit. And I guess I think Roger had talked to your mom, Eric, yeah. about something, something. And then your mom had mentioned that I was at Billy's house. And it was funny because I'm at Billy's house and Billy's mom says, hey, the phone's for you. And this is before cell phones or anything. I'm like, yeah. who knows that I'm here? And she says, oh, it's Roger. And she knows Roger because Billy rode for Roger way back in the day. Right, right. Yeah. So then the whole CW thing came about. And then, um, right, you know, Eric, and, again, Eric and I were teammates again back on, you know, back on CW. Yeah. So crazy. I mean, you guys really followed, you know, together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We, we right traveled a lot show. together and then yeah. hey, so much stuff. Dude, do you remember Chuck when we were at the Donnells and you, we were all there, we were on CW and you convinced me because we are, dude, Chuck, so Chuck was always convincing me to do stupid shit. And so he, <laughs> hey, Chuck, Chuck, not hard to do, is it? It was not hard to convince me to do stuff. <laughs> so you know what would be, really, you know what be really cool? You know what would be really cool if you did so this? He, so, Mike, you remember when when uh, Dorothy and Mike, they lived right below the, um, just up past. The hill. Yeah. Up the, so hill, yeah. Up the yeah. hill from Orange, right up the hill from yeah. Orange Race. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right below Orange Mining Company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you turn right off Chapman, yep. Yep. two-lane road. It's dark, right? Like super dark at night. So we're hanging out at Donnell's. We're talking about bikes and stuff. And Chuck's like, dude, you should, you should like, you should like streak across. You should like streak across the street, a highway in front of a car, man. I was like, no, dude, no way, man. And he's like, no, 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 you could totally do it, man. You could totally do it. He's like super fast. So dumb shit me. Okay. All right. I'm going to do it. So I go across the street and I'm, dude, I have to stand up and show you guys. So I'm standing there. I'm in, like, I'm in the bushes, right? I got, I pull, I pull my pants down and I'm hiding in the bushes. And I'm like, all right, Chuck, tell me when a car is, tell me when a car is coming. He's like, okay, okay, I will. And he, so he yelled, okay, there's a car coming, ready, go. And dude, I didn't take my pants off. So they're around my ankles. So I'm hobbling across the highway. I can't run. Dude, it was a cop. <laughs> <laughs> he told me to run in front of a cop. <laughs> so I like, look, I see it's a cop. So I'm hobbling, I'm running. I, dude, I just ran into the bushes at Mike's house. I'm hiding behind the bushes. They're in the garage laughing. The lights flip on. Dude, it was a oh. lady cop. <laughs> so oh she my gets God. out, flashlight. I'm hiding in the bushes like I'm going to get away. She's like, hey, you need to come on out. 
And just, what do you say, Mike? Just, just lay down. Just lay down. Yeah. <laughs> in your sleep. It's in your sleep. In your sleep. <laughs> well, she was trying to be serious about it. She was trying to have like, but she just started laughing. She's like, you guys, just don't, it's unsafe. Don't do that anymore. Don't, just don't do that anymore. <laughs> what are you, kind of excuse, me, are you guys, be, excuse me, are you guys BMXers? <laughs> That's right. yeah, we do oh. things different. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, we've had our fair share of incidents of police, like, the one with the motorhome where we're flashing those girls and they pulled us over. Oh, dude. That little podunk town where we got, we, we found that bike and we started riding it and pitching out on the rear wheel. So bad. Just talk with the bike. wheel. <laughs> it, is, it is truly, uh, like, seriously, when you consider the, the, if you start stacking the stories and and thinking about it, it's, it really is pretty incredible that, that at dude. one time, none of us went to jail. It got some charges pressed against us. Oh, well, I mean, one of us went to jail. I just didn't get the charges pressed because yeah, exactly. we pulled we pulled our money together and I got out oh. for something I didn't do, Charles. <laughs> no, Charles, hey, reckon that little girl's bike ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we weren't all egging you on. Yeah, I got oh, like, oh, you can go straight it harder than that. Go faster, you... Chuck. Go faster. <laughs> oh. You know, it's funny because I mentioned to TC about this all the time, and Mr. Nelson and I will talk. The era of BMX that we've come from. I would say probably like up until like Danny, Jason Richardson, that era. Yeah. I, I don't think BMX will ever be like that again. No way. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, just the factory teams, just the craziness of stuff that was going on. It's just, we were, we we're pretty spoiled. We we're pretty lucky, you know, and it, there's, there's no reality show that could top the shit that we did. <laughs> no. and, and you know what, man, it was perfect time. The industry was growing. The races were getting bigger. Um, the the money was there for the teams. We do. We got paid to do that. Are you yeah. kidding me? We got to, we got paid to go do that. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and the, the the friends and the adventures are just priceless. I mean, yeah. they're. I mean, you're. You know, you guys, JB, Mike, you know, Eric, and their their friends. I mean. I sent a text to Gary Ellis the other day with an emoji giving him the middle finger. Right. He text right back with the laughing emoji. So we have those group of friends that, you know, we we have kids, we have our own lives, you know, we're doing other things, but we can send that friendly text and it was just like yesterday. Yeah. That's just so crazy. priceless. So priceless. Huh? Speaking of community and family, uh, when when I posted that we were you were finally gonna come on and a bunch of people laughed about that that knew mrs hatfield wanted to make sure that we said that you know she she, she considers you family too you know, oh you're, she oh yeah, you're, you're one of her boys too that's mama yeah, yeah the, mama, mama, hatfield. Mama, mama mama yeah oh. she they're the they're great people i mean anytime i was you know we we're down south in her area we'd always make sure that we you know go and stay at her house even you know even at the races we crash at her motor you know in her motor home yeah you know? And, we uh, slept outside her motorhome home once. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you could always get some sweet tea over there, man. Oh, yeah. some sweet tea and an ice cold Diet Pepsi. <laughs> you could always get that over there to have in, in that in that square, what was it? White and green square what, motorhome white, that looked white like a refrigerator. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Thanks to the profits of Dixie Garbage. Oh my goodness. That's actually what it was. Yeah. Yep. Dude, yep. I still every time I call her, I always when she answers, I go, is this excuse me, is this Dixie Garbage? I'm looking to get something picked up over here. <laughs> <laughs> never let him forget and then i could hear her voice oh michael miranda yeah, so good man <laughs> fantastic chuck you you've had you've had some phenomenal teammates and you're you know everyone loves you absolutely everybody loves you but i gotta ask the question did you love everybody who was your worst oh. teammate who would you say was the toughest teammate to have now are we talking as far as like Period. Oh. You, you tell me. You pick it how you want to. But you know, being an you know, old boss with you know Carlo hey, and those guys, you, you know, who? great. Every. I mean, it's funny because in that moment when you're ready, you can just think they're the biggest jackass. But as you get older and mature, you know, oh, that guy. <clears throat> Danny Nelson was cool, but a little particular. Okay, a little particular, love him to death. And we all have our inner idiosyncrasies, but he had to have like things kind of his way. Um, couldn't room with him because he'd always have the fucking room like at 56 degrees. I, 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 I swear I walked into his room one time and Scott Breverman had the 
the, the blankets pulled up here <laughs> and a beanie on. So that, that was a little difficult, but loved Danny to death. Um, Greg Romero, loved him to death. Still love him. Great guy. Um, Primo. What's that? Primo. Primo. But he was one of those guys. He was like you. He said, you have shit everywhere. <laughs> There's shit everywhere. Right. So um, he, oh. that, that was cool. Gary was cool also. Um, it's funny because when I first got on the GT, you know, it, it was a little quiet. You just have to know Gary because he, he is pretty quiet until you get to know him. So I kind of, at first, when I first met Gary, I had, I felt like I was walking around eggshells just because he's just kind of quiet and reserved a little bit. But once I got to know him, um, great dude. Oh, um, he's funny. He's, he's, he is yeah. funny. Yeah. He's funny. Yeah. He's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. And he, and he's in the game, man. He, oh, yes, yeah. he's, he's, he's down for pranking or doing yes, whatever is. or rent a card shenanigans. He, Loves that. he was down. He, uh -huh. he was down. Um, but, you know, I, I really didn't have a teammate that I just totally despised. We just all kind of had our little bit of differences that kind of, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so besides me, who was your absolute favorite? Who, who do you think you were closest to? I think I know the answer, but who do you think you were closest to of all the, all the other riders who were on all your teams? Oh, shit. I definitely have to say EC. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, yeah. EC, because um, – you know, and, and as Eric, as you went into the whole mountain bike thing, and then I stayed in the BMX thing, you know, we kind of, we yeah. went separate paths, but it was, I mean, dude, we, we've traveled so much together. We're on the same team. Well, there were four, it was also, man, it was, I think um, the reason it was like that is it was formative, right? Like we were still, we were still growing up. We, I mean, you know, we were still young kids or, or young adults, and we were still also finding our legs as um, better BMX guys and developing our stats and our careers, right? So like, yeah. you know, when we were both on free agent, we had only had a couple of national wins, you know, to, yeah. to our names and that we both kind of started on that same trajectory. So those those three years that we had were- Yeah. Fun. So you, you factor in the time or, you know, the three years, but the stuff that we had done together, I mean, it's like 20 years, you know? Totally. I, agree. I like I like how you said when we were you know formative and we were growing we were still growing up. J, JV just spent the weekend with the three of us were together and we saw you Charles. Yeah, yeah. And what, JV, would you say how much have we grown up? Yeah. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on. yeah. I agree. I don't really. You know, so so Hutch, Hutch sends us out on tour with his 19 year old son to kind of chaperone us. And Mike, how old were you at that time? 23 maybe 22 23 okay. at, at the and most i'm the next oldest one I, I think i was about 18 so i can't believe hutch sent out a group of kids you mike being the biggest kid of them all in a motorhome for seven weeks <laughs> dude we had a we had a seven-year-old a nine-year-old and a 10-year-old there and we were and responsible so, for their lives oh my goodness somebody could have called cps on us dude, it's <laughs> crazy it really is, man. Think about it. That is crazy. Think, think, think about it. We all have kids. Would you have let your seven, eight, nine-year-old kid <laughs> go travel the country in a motorhome? Dude, no way. For seven weeks and the oldest person being 23 that acts 13. <laughs> no chance, exactly. You know, I, I can only say it was a different time. It was. Yes. Then. That's yeah. exactly but, it, JV. That's, exa that's right? the perfect way to describe it. Yes, it was a different time. But would you say, JV, after last weekend, or spending the time with all of us together, is it any different? No, it wasn't any different. It was, I mean, it was so fun. The, the whole weekend itself was fun. I mean, we, you know, from, I mean, we're up at like 3.30 in the morning, sitting in the, in the hotel room, like, you know, we would have 30 years ago, whatever it, the number is. Yeah. laughing and just talk, you know just doing what we what John, we normally we got, would have we, done it's so fun it's crazy yeah we went to the local watering hole there and and took basically took that place over two nights in a row but you know we would get back to the to the room at like i don't know 1 30 something like that and for no reason other than just sitting at staying up and just bullshitting we stayed up till 3 30 in the morning yeah. crazy I, re I remember like at the nbl grands aba grands columbus that 
we don't get together and just tell stories and oh, man. goof off and shoot the shit. And the next thing you know, it's like, well, our flights in 20 minutes, we might, you know, we might as well just stay up and just go straight to the <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. It, one of those nights at Frogtown, we stayed up laughing about, dude, can you believe we're pulling this off on Charles? <laughs> oh my god that was so funny. all that all that comes around yeah comes around. Hey, i couldn't believe like when you when you had when you stretched on that wetsuit or that evil knievel suit <laughs> hey w- when we let eddie king in on the charles townsend thing he was he just he was yeah. you guys are really doing that i go oh yeah and you know eddie <laughs> yes yeah, he loved it hollywood, yeah. hollywood stripes had curves to it Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> the, the evil there. logo that thing was so stretched out looking like an emoji <laughs> oh my that's, god that's that's okay mike because man you ran that thing loud and proud and strong oh, brother absolutely that was oh, so cool. man. hollywood it was just true hollywood it was, was. Yeah, it was a yeah. show i hey, signed hey, up for three motos and only raced one that's all I, hey, I, I i found myself when we're at frog town i was off talking to somebody i'm like oh wait 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 Miranda's coming up to racing that evil Knievel suit. I need to go watch. <laughs> Priorities. Such a great oh, time, man. dude. Growing up a poor kid in Lakewood, I would have never, this bike is taking me places. How can yeah. I say no to that? I agree. I agree. Yeah. And I've, I've, I've said it numerous of times, you know, I didn't come for money and I grew up on the rough side of East side San Jose. And if it wasn't for the sport of BMX, I would not have met any of the people that I've met. I would not have seen any of the places or gone to any of the countries. I, I was pretty lucky. And the, the experience of all the travel and everything that we've seen and done, that's, Dude, that's a whole nother yeah. explanation there. Let's be honest. You and I probably both would have been in jail. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like true, like really facts. no oh. jokes aside, yeah. the neighborhoods that we grew up in. Yeah. And if we hadn't have had two wheels underneath us and we hadn't yeah. have been exposed to good people and good influences, we would have found bad influences and yeah. bad things would have happened. Yeah. Hey, JV, there- JV, I think I can guess which one would have been the big spoon in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh shoot! Oh shoot! <laughs> hey, you know what? The the one thing I love about that place is it's in that little little town, and the like like he said, we found this little old dive of a watering hole, and we went in, Dude. and we we took it over, and we had the best time. There were some other people from Frogtown in there, and we were just having a great time. But the next night, we when we went in. It was the the lady that owned it came around and gave us all hugs. She was like, "Oh yeah." Dude. So, what's your? We played what's your number? Yeah, played what's, what's your, your number? number? What's your number is a game we play. So it's like to do something. It's a you know it's a dare. But hey, what's your number? How much would you do that for? Hey, so, so tell them what the new, tell JV. Them. Tell them what the number was. Tell tell them what it started off as, JV. Well, no, should I tell them what the thing was? Yeah, tell them what the thing was. Oh. Uh. So there was a hot dog machine that was in the corner and hot dog machine. They were oh, hot, the, you know, like, hot a carous, like a carousel, like a carousel type of thing. Yeah, yeah. And and there were hot dogs in there. And we noticed that the hot dogs from yesterday were still there. So we said, <laughs> chances are the hot dogs have been there for a long time. It's not just one day. I mean, they've yeah. probably been in there. It's not turning, it's been off, you know, Machine's the whole off. time. Unplugged. Yeah. Right. So then, so then they, you know, Mike, of course, started with the, you know, how much, how much, you know, like what's, how much. To, what's your to, number? Yeah. What's, what's your, your number? number? What's your number? And um, we started playing it with ourselves. And then all of a sudden the locals, the women said, what are you I, guys look, doing? You got to, you got to yeah. build, you got to build community. So I went over to these ladies <laughs> and I said, Hey, you know, we just had this, you know, we're just talking about this. You know, see how much would it take for you to eat that hot dog? to the ladies oh my goodness now they're now they're lo- now they're local so they know how long that thing's probably I, been in there yeah <laughs> i almost got them at 80 bucks i almost got them to do it they didn't take they didn't take up the offer nope. at 80 bucks 80 bucks oh my goodness dude oh it my. was pretty nasty though so the, the did, did we ever figure out how long the hot dogs were in there uh, I think since Frogtown last year. <laughs> All I know is at the end of the night, we just we were negotiating. Guys. Yeah, we were negotiating with everybody. We got the entire bar. All everyone. In, I mean, not bar. Bob family, Harrow was in there. Family, family yeah. wrestling. Bob Harrow, John Bulgens, every. Oh, and no, nobody God. wanted any part of it except for 
he, the, our little group were just kept egging it on. And finally, he, I'm holding, it's been dunked now in a glass of beer. For, uh. so, it'll, so it'll be sterilized. It'll be safe now. <laughs> And the glass of beer, who knows whose that was? It was just laying there. Oh, so, so finally, he just grabs it and took a bite. Takes a, takes no, a he yeah. took a bite out of it. Oh, my goodness. Well, hey, so I like, gotta ask you this, Eric. Did you yeah. swallow? <laughs> <laughs> Snap that thing off like a Slim Jim. <laughs> yeah, and so it, so you, you can't, he can't win. So I have to, so I take a bite. Like, oh, of course, yeah, of Mike course, he's not gonna let that happen. No, no. Yeah. And so one of the one of, <laughs> one of the lizards from on the bar, she comes over <laughs> and she takes a bite. She ate it. She, she, she took a bite out of my hand. She took a bite. Oh. So there was just a little dark little nub oh, from the very gosh. end. And we just dropped it in the beer and called it a day. Oh my gosh. So who got three way tie? Three no, three way tie. Nobody took nobody oh, got it. Oh my goodness. Jared Jared Justice had retired. But we had become pretty good friends. So he had come down to watch. So the plan was after the races, I was going to go hang out with him. And then we were going to go into the city. And then I was going to come back because Philly wasn't too far. And I was just going to catch the flight out. So <clears throat> I was rooming with TC. And then Biggie was on tour or something like that. But Biggie was still there. So <laughs> I get back from the track, pack my bikes, pack my clothes and all that shit. And then Jared picks me up and then we go into the city and we're goofing around in the city and all that stuff. And I time it just right to come back to the hotel, pick up my back and catch the flight. I get back to the hotel and what did TC and Big E do? They fucking put my bike back together. (laughs) (laughs) They fucking put my bike back together, threw my clothes all over the place. And mind you, Mind you, my flight was at whatever time, but I had timed it perfect to where I would get to the airport, drop the car off, and you know, just check in my bags. I did not allow allow for the extra forty five minutes of time. That was just, I do. I was so pissed. I was so mad because you know, up all day racing, went into the city, got back to the hotel like at five in the morning, and I opened the door, and my bike is put together, and my clothes are all over the place. Oh my gosh. And they that didn't is, put my that's bike, a great yeah that's a great and they didn't put my bike back together just like snug everything down they tightened everything down like it was race ready so i had to break <laughs> it all down pack all my clothes it was absolutely know. perfect oh. yeah so you know what and and one thing we proved a couple weeks ago is that stuff still goes on oh yes. yeah. Yeah. yeah amongst us with yes. us yeah. yeah yeah with us it I, never and I, do. I wonder if things like that happen in the new era i wonder if that stuff you know, it, it, it can't i just can't see how it can you know i was you can't because yeah i so to answer your question ec i don't think there's no way that they were crazy as we were yeah no. you know between the how do you think it is and, like yeah so what's the travel like what's that it's just how, what do you think the travel is like i don't I, I can tell you get this. to where they're going and good night i don't think th- i don't think they're fitting nine people and their bikes into a Lincoln town car, town car. Right. <laughs> right. And, and sleep yeah. in seven in a room and have oh, to find goodness. out who gets a bed. Oh, <laughs> you see, you see that picture popping up every once in a while when we're on CW, dude. Oh that my thing. goodness. That bags, the airbags <laughs> down. Yeah. That, that was that pretty was, awesome. That was the, that was the most we've, I think that was the most we had ever. Yeah. Been to a car. Yeah. I think that's the most, when we were on CW, that was the most bikes we were able to cram. And people thought we got the town cars just to kind of look fancy. We got them because it had the most space. Yeah. There was, you know? that, that was crazy, dude. There was yeah. nine people in the car. Oh my God. The most think space. About that for a second. Nine people in one car. Crazy. CW. Yeah. No seat belts. You didn't need them. No. <laughs> you were crammed in so No tight. seat belts. So gonna... not only did the Lincoln town cars have all the space, but. I wouldn't know about this, but they had some pretty strong transmissions. Yeah. <laughs> All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. We got to save it. Hold on. <laughs> Chuck, you know that if we're going to have the Christmas special with rental oh, car stores. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. He's a hybrid. Good, good times, man. It's, it's no wonder none of us, I mean, whether it was us or you know, back in the day with GT or Diamondback, you know, all the teams that would travel a lot back in the day, I mean, we were like a traveling band, you know, and it's <laughs> It's amazing that it was a circus. Amazing, yeah, we were a circus. And it's amazing that <laughs> nobody has gotten like seriously hurt or incarcerated for a long period of time or anything like that. 
goodness. Oh, me. good stuff. Well, it yeah. is, but it is, it is interesting, right, Chuck? Because like, it is like, you know, I, I tell people this, that sometimes BMX can be, a, it can be a spider web that sucks you in and it's hard to get out of, like you get so locked into it, right? And like, yeah. there's a whole world outside of BMX. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it, like I, I actually use Jason Richardson as an example to my kids about building a backup plan because I think Jay did a really good job of staying in school, yeah. getting a degree while he was racing and still being highly competitive, winning yeah. one world championships. Um, and, but he, now he's, he's not, he, he had this backup plan. It, well, it may have been his main plan, but you know, now he's, he's been able to navigate outside of being dependent right. on the bike industry, dude. And it's, I can tell you for me, man, it was scary. Like when I got done racing mountain bikes, there was a window, Mike knows, I've talked with Mike about it a lot more and it, like, it was scary, man. And I was emotional about it. Cause it was like, I didn't have a backup plan, man. And I was just like, trying to figure my way out and so i love hearing those stories like you say chuck about people that have figured it out and understood because you you know when we're growing up racing bmx they didn't tell us save your money plan for the future yeah. you know, my parents my parents they did educate me about about that a little bit but like we're so caught up in the moment of like it was so important that you know I, you don't I, ever think it's going to end. Yeah. No, right. Yeah. I, I look back now and I think JV was the smartest one of us all because he, he you know, thanks to Matt Hayden, so. thanks to Matt yeah. Hayden, <laughs> Matt Hayden, dude, you telling him, dude, like, you got to practice. You got to practice. Yeah, practice man. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Matt just <laughs> called him out at a race. That's not he's, not yeah. <laughs> he's just told yeah. him flat out, dude, what so are you doing? Were you not hit, JV, were you not hitting the elliptical enough or what? <laughs> the Galindo bars were flexing too much. Yeah. <laughs> he, could, he couldn't even flex the Galindo bars, man. Exactly. And JV just said, "You That's... know what? I, I can't. I can't do this half-ass and school half-ass." So he just he, he made his decision. He committed himself, and and you know he's super successful in what he does. And oh. now we we beg him to come on our show with us. And <laughs> he's right. the, he's the brains of the outfit. Exactly. Put it that way. He's the brains we're, of the outfit. Yeah, we're, we're the, we're the crazy clown circus. Yeah. Yeah. yeah crazy. It's, it's, I, I really like hearing, I think there's a group of guys like yourself, JV, and Richardson that did the BMX thing and were good enough at it, but knew that, hey, I got to get ready for something else. Yeah. And then there's a the group of guys that were like, um, you know, myself, Mike, Eric, those guys that were good in BMX. And then after it was all done, kind of figured it out. But there's still those group of people that after BMX is done, they they still haven't figured it out what life is about. So mm -hmm. yeah. we have a lot of teammates that are in that situation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, that's that's the sad part. That's that's the depressing part to, to see. You it know? is sad. And it yeah. and it it is sad. So you know, like like you said, Chuck, it, it is it's a it's good to hear of you know people that have navigated, like I said, sometimes I call it the spider web, and it's like, you know, they were able to get outside of it and see, like, oh my gosh, there's so much more. BMX is amazing. And our, we have, like you said, Chuck, we have so many friends globally, literally globally. You, I, I, you know, I think the four of us, we could probably get on an airplane and, and have some place to stay in a form blindfold and pick a spot on the thing and go there and then get there and be able to call somebody. Yeah. And but, so, but probably couldn't rent a car though. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> but dude, that's a really, a really unique scenario. Well, there's one more thing I want to I want to talk about, and that's uh, when you were talking earlier about taking advantage of your opportunities and working hard. We were at the Hall of Fame dinner, Chuck, all of us, and uh, there was a uh, you know I was working hard, working, yeah. working the backside of the room, talking to everybody, shaking hands, whatever, and they called everybody up to up onto the podium for the Hall of Fame picture of all the Hall of Famers up there, and uh, and I was I knew I was going to be the last person up there. But then I saw the second to last person just about to walk up the stairs and I saw an opportunity. And you know how it is, boys. You've yeah, got to take advantage goodness. of those opportunities. So just as Chuck took his second second step up onto the stage, I ran up there. I, his kicked, pants down. I, grabbed his, <laughs> I grabbed his underwear. I could just see his <laughs> underwear. And I, I pulled him up with everything oh, I had. Up. I pulled his underwear up as high as I could. 
up on stage in front of everybody just so oh my goodness and then we walked all the way up to the podium while all of <laughs> so just so you know i had on my favorite pair of speedos that day <laughs> oh man Dude, after still... you got a hold of the miranda they were super speedos <laughs> he's still digging them out he's still digging them out Dude, you... You, what would you say back in the day eric um <laughs> they're like pac-man they're getting eaten <laughs> Just swallowed up, dude. <laughs> you might be Chuck D, but you were Chuck G string that day. Oh, I was yeah. Chuck. I mean, those things were Chuck like G. suspenders by the time you were done. Oh my god. <laughs> I love it. Chuck, oh we my goodness. We, the- we black magic, Amtrak, Choo Choo. We we absolutely love and adore you, man. It's, oh my uh, god. Oh thanks my for being god. exactly, exactly who you are. We wouldn't want yeah. you. No, dude. And, Love a good, and a good sport. And a good sport. Yeah, you know, um, we don't talk as often as we should, but you know, the hardcore group of BMX people that we all grew up around. I mean, we can we can pick up the phone like it was like it was yesterday. Hey, 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 hey so right right quick, Miranda. Do you remember when we were in London and I think it was you, EC, it was me, Mike, and EC. Mike had to go to Harrods because you remember yeah. Mike, you back then you're you were you were a little bougie back then. He right? was. He's yeah. Yeah. You, you had some BOT, some bougie overtones, right? So we had taken the train from wherever we were, Slough, into, into England, into London. So you could go to Harrods. And I remember I had fell asleep on the train. And this was my first trip out of the country, right? So I was like 19 years old. I wigged out and I look and you guys were not fucking there. We walked out. Oh, we walked out. left him. We, we, he fell asleep. Left the we fucking train car, right? Because it was a train, JV, it was a train car. Yeah. It, it was like the next day we had gotten there. So I had jet lag and all that stuff. And Miranda had to go to Harrods, you know, and <laughs> do whatever bougie bullshit he wanted to do. So we're like, okay, let's go. So we take the train in. And I can't even believe, Eric, your parents let you go with Mike into London, right? So we get on the train, JV, and I'm just tired and I doze off doze off and i wake up and they're nowhere to be found and i fucking shit myself for me and they, had, they had gone into the next car yeah we, oh. we just moved to the next car <laughs> <laughs> so when mike says just pretend you're asleep i was really asleep yeah. <laughs> oh shit dude oh, good. So, oh so good good it's stuff so good yeah you gotta be careful so good you so, really do. <laughs> being around Miranda, dude, it's 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 prank 24-7. <laughs> you it was the best decision we ever made, dude, when we went to get on up. Because oh. we, we got to do this. Uh, we're still talking about it, man. We're still, we're still, we're still doing it. it. Hey, hey, I'm real like I said, I'm really surprised we didn't get in more trouble on that summer tour, man. Good stuff, man. Good well, stuff. Well, you, you've uh, you've definitely made our lives better, Chuck. We oh, love you, man. You, thank you. We, feeling is mutual. Feeling is yep. mutual. You guys are BM, my BMX brothers from another mother, and you know. And you know what else you are? You're I'm a dirty a, knob. I'm a dirty knob. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, my man. Well, listen, have a great night. Thanks for taking the time for coming. Yeah, come no with worries. Us. Appreciate yeah. you That's guys. Fantastic. Love you guys. Yeah, yeah brother. Time, All right, Chuck D. All right. You guys be safe. All right, All right brother. Thanks, man. Us. Love you. See Thanks, you. Thanks, man. man. See you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one, you bunch of dirty knobs. I'm going to send a box out to somebody who subscribes. So please do that. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Comment if you have anything to say. We'd love to hear it. And uh, we will be back out here in two weeks with another one. 
And thanks to our sponsors. Speaking of which, we are going to read some commercials to you now. Thanks for uh, showing our sponsors the love because they're showing it to us. Thanks again, and uh, we'll catch up to you soon. And then sing it out right now. All right. <laughs> Coming live and direct from the Colt Clubhouse in Santa Ana, California. Come on down and get all your BMX needs. We're giving away free air for your tires. <laughs> That's all I got, brother. That's great. That's great. All right. Yeah. It's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> Kenda, designed for your journey on the road, on the trail, or on the racetrack, you can count on Kenda quality. Our tires are engineered for performance and value across a wide range of interests and applications. See why Kenda is the right choice. It's your move. Imagine how bikes can lead to a healthier, more connected world. Bikes set us apart, free to explore and move, and experience our relationships with people and places like nothing else can. At Saris, we don't just imagine a more bikeable world. We're all in, making it happen. As our Sun Tour shares your passion of cycling, we are committed to giving you the highest level of service in the industry, along with products that hopefully will exceed your expectations. Serving riders is the cornerstone of our business. And we pride ourselves in doing it. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. ABC, the American BMX company, bringing you brands like Race Inc., Cook Brothers, Botima, Box, Kuwahara, and BMX Action. Check them out at abmxc.com. ODI Grips, the world leader in grip technology, home of the lock-on grip system. Check them out over at www.odigrips.com. Mega Design Group is a full-service marketing firm. They handle everything from logos to advertising to packaging. Having over 25 years' experience in the print and marketing fields they can handle any hurdle check it out at megadesigngroup.com cool stop brake pads high performance bicycle brake pads since 1977 check them out at coolstop.com that's k o o l s t o p.com supercross bmx what can we say our lives revolve around bmx Founded in 1989 to build the ultimate BMX race frame, they've never strayed from that vision. Hey, for more details, check it out at supercrossbmx.com. Amy Grips is dedicated to using all of its manufacturing strengths, including engineering, research, and development, to successfully prepare for future growth while demanding that the quality of its products provide consumers with complete satisfaction. Making grips since 1974. Check them out at amegrips.com. If you have a Senna cycling helmet, you know what it's like to ride connected. Senna got their start in communications for the motorcycling industry, where they're now a leader. Senna brought their same tech that goes into those helmet-to-helmet -helmet motorcycle communication systems into cycling helmets. Senna bike helmets have an integrated microphone and two speakers hidden right into the shell. Senna helmets connect together on a mesh or Bluetooth network so you can talk to your friends while you ride without shouting over wind noise, even if you're not side by side. That's super cool, especially in the trails. Senna helmets also pair with smartphones so you can listen to your playlist without blocking out ambient noise, and you can take phone calls and even hear turn by turn GPS directions. Check out the podcasts that we listen to. These are our friends. We wouldn't be here without their help, so give them a check out. And finally, you know. Keep it dirty. I remember one call that you called me once. It was a very short phone call. Uh, I had snuck in. I had snuck in your room and had loaded your bike box full of. Uh, every every phone book I could find from our room, everyone, all the phone books, the Bibles, just jammed your bike back full, and then and then you you flew out the next morning. You know, we stayed up all night long, and then you flew out the next day. And I remember when you got home, you called me, you, you just like.
Rissa Fracka Racka Fracka. Hollywood Sucker Racka Fracka. Yeah, that that, that, that was it. Oh, I there was one there was one time we were uh, at a race in New Jersey. It might have been Ben Salem. 